Hi, my name is Millen, and I'm one of the co-founders of Benegraft. Being students at Johns Hopkins, we spend a lot of our time at the hospital and around patients. Specifically in Baltimore, we have noticed that for patients, treatment at hospitals can be taxing, both in terms of cost and time. About two years ago, while shadowing a rhinoplasty procedure, we found that simple techniques were increasing operating time because of inadequate tools. We felt that we could improve the situation, and that was the start of Benegraft. A rhinoplasty is a surgical reconstruction of the nose. In the United States alone, there are over 220,000 of these procedures performed annually. In fact, it's the number one most common plastic surgery procedure performed in the U.S. However, oftentimes individuals must undergo a second procedure when they are unhappy with results. Despite its frequency, rhinoplasty has proved to be a difficult procedure to master. The current standard for a rhinoplasty procedure involves a very labor and skill intensive method of carving a piece of cartilage into the desired shape, known as a graft, and placing that back into the nose. However, roughly 25% of cases using this method necessitate a revision surgery. Although, there is another method, which is becoming more popular, which involves dicing the piece of cartilage and shaping the dice pieces into the desired graft. This method boasts a much better 4% reoperation rate. The biggest issue is that dicing cartilage can take up to two hours in the OR thus discouraging surgeons from adopting this method, despite its clinically superior results. Based on surgeon feedback and hours of research and development, we have set out to invent a cartilage processing device that effortlessly dices cartilage for rhinoplasty procedures. Our solution reduces operation time, thus improving surgeon efficiency and saving hospitals money. It also provides patients with better, more consistent results, diminishing the need for reoperation. And of course, it ensures patient safety and satisfaction. This is the Benegraph Dicer, a single-use, disposable, handheld device complete with patent-pending proprietary technology. All a surgeon needs to do is place their sample of cartilage onto a surface and roll the device over it in order to produce finely diced cartilage, ready to be formed into a graft in under five minutes. This is significantly better than what can be produced using current methods after 20 minutes, as you can see by these figures. Currently, there are no cartilage dicers on the market, but there are other cartilage processing tools used for slicing, carving, or crushing. Across the industry, the Benegraph dicer outperforms all of the competitors in the field, as it's the only available tool that delivers on all of the surgeon's needs to efficiently develop a long-lasting cartilage graft. We plan to competitively price our device at $150. The time surgeons save using the Benegraph dicer will save nearly $1,200 per procedure. That can save hospitals $851,000 annually. We have estimated our total market size to be approximately $100 million. In order to reach this market, we are adopting an indirect sales strategy. Our primary customers and end users are hospitals and private practices. However, as a small venture, we are aware that branching out and establishing relationships with hospitals would be very challenging and inefficient. So, our goal is to license our device to distributors, such as CardioMed and Black and Black Surgical, who, are, who already have access to a big network of hospitals. This would allow us to sell our device to hospitals through distributors who already have those connections. Through the Baltipreneurs Accelerator Program and the help of our amazing mentor, Dr. Mike Tangria, we have turned our student project into a real student venture. Mike offered new business expertise which helped us flesh out our business plan and market strategy. In addition, the initial funding from the accelerator allowed us to fi file for a provisional patent on our device, a major milestone for our venture. The extra funding that we would receive from this program would help us accomplish our next set of goals. We estimate that we'll need $5,000 to reach a market-ready design for a device and develop five devices for testing purposes. Another $3,500 will be allocated to setting up a case study for surgeons to use and give feedback on our design. The last $1,500 will go towards gaining exposure through presentations at medical device conferences and also fronting costs that will come when we incorporate our venture. Here are our amazing and passionate co-founders and team leaders, Sabine and Brooke, as well as our clinical sponsor, Dr. Patrick Byrne, and faculty advisor, Dr. Nicholas Durr. They, along with the rest of our ambitious undergraduate team and experienced advisory board, have propelled this project for the past two years to what it is today. We can't wait for our device to change the face of medicine. Thank you. Hi, and welcome to Explore. My name is Hervé Franceschi. I'm one of the founders of Explore. 
we are a gig economy startup uh, in a way similar to Airbnb, but for food. Uh, so we've uh, developed an internet platform where we have hosts and guests. Hosts will cook either brunch, lunch or dinner at their homes and guests will make a reservation to eat at, at some host via Explore. The host choose their own schedule. We have a team of four people, uh, three are, are Loyola students, and I am in the computer science faculty. We, we're charging a 13% service key to guests. Um, there, is no, there is no fee for the host. 3% uh, of those 13% are going towards uh, processing credit cards and we're using Stripe for that. So that yields a 10% net fee for us. So who are the hosts and who are the guests that we're targeting? The hosts, typically people who like to cook, uh, like to entertain, like to host a party, um, and they may be interested in making money on the side. Um, as for the guests, uh, we think these are people who like to eat out, um, very social, very adventurous, they like to, to try out new things, meet new people, new ideas, new cultures, um, and, and they also you know, care about how, how much money they spend as well. So um, we have a search engine for guests to look for hosts. It's all based on, on, on location. And, and we're currently um, adding features to, to refine the search based on, on food, uh, food specialty. We have some indirect competition, uh, restaurants, of course, uh, Airbnb experiences, um, and also some, uh, some other website like eatwith.com or chef.com. Those are mostly event driven with some fixed locations, some fixed dates. Um, and a menu set in advance and typically upscale. Some of them include food tours or cooking classes, as well as pre prefix dinners for the most part. Um, we are more organically driven, uh, where the hosts are in charge of what they're offering. Uh, they set their own schedule, uh, they set the, the menus, they're not necessarily upscale, there's no requirement for that. Um, and we're likely to be more affordable than, than our competition. We are pre-revenue. Um, we don't have any professional investor with us, just the four of us, and, and we've spent a minimum amount of, uh, of money, less than $500. Um, we've uh, developed version one at this point, uh, and it is functional. We've tested it internally. Um, it's currently being tested by, by friends and family of Team Explorer. Um, we, we are using test credit cards at the moment, but we can flip the switch and go to actual credit cards um, overnight. So what are the challenges and the risks? Uh, well, we feel that the software development risks are behind us. At this point, we have version one that, that works. Um, marketing risks. So we are aiming for a two-headed market. Uh, so we'll need to find hosts and guests uh, and, and of course, generate some critical mass to, to, uh, to get everything going. We have some quality control um, challenges. Um, we addressing those with a review system for both um, the host and the guest. The review system is operational and, and uh, operational and functioning. Um, we are planning to send postcards to hosts to verify their address. Uh, as far as the guest, there is no overnight and the host is present uh, while the guests are here, so that limits the, uh, the risk. In terms of regulation, we're limiting the number of guests per meal to six, so that falls under the BNB standards and regulations, um, and that's how we're addressing that issue. We want to thank the, the accelerator um, for pushing the wagon forward, you know, with the deadlines, reminders, uh, advice from our mentor um, and other mentors as well. We, we really enjoy the um, exchanging ideas with other entrepreneurs, getting feedback from them. I think the presentations all along from the Accelerator's guests were very useful. Um, so where we are, what we need, um, well, our needs are mostly social media. Um, we need to target and recruit hosts, and we need to target and reach guests. Well, um, I'd like to thank you for your support, and thank you for listening to Explore. Hi. My name is Adil Afshar, and I'm the co-founder and chief operating officer of Halal Beauty Cosmetics. And today, I want to share a story with you. 
a story about how my dream of becoming a chemical engineer allowed me to help my mom pursue her love of beauty. By the end of it, I hope I can inspire you to pursue your own dreams. You'll be surprised at how far you can go when you stay close to home. So let's begin. This is my mom. She immigrated here from Pakistan when she was 16 years old. And shortly after arriving here, she fell in love with beauty and became a licensed cosmetologist. She absolutely loved it. Now, my mom, being a Muslim immigrant, was always cautious of what she ate here. In fact, she was obsessive. She was always tediously checking ingredient labels to make sure she wasn't consuming pork or alcohol. Imagine her shock when she found out that many of her beauty products used pig lard or alcohol as an ingredient. She had spent so much of her life making sure that she was avoiding these foods just to inadvertently consume it when she wore her lipstick. It wasn't right for her, it wasn't right for her clients, and it wasn't right for her community. So she set out to fix it. Now me, just having graduated with a degree in chemical engineering, found this as a perfect opportunity to help. We put out a market survey and the results were tremendous. I'm proud to present to you Halal Beauty Cosmetics, a 100% halal certified makeup line made for Muslims who want to look and feel beautiful without compromising on their faith. Although we make makeup, we're so much more than that. We want to be a voice for the millions of Muslims who often feel left out of the conversation from traditional beauty brands, and we want to redefine what beauty is to reflect our values. Now, this isn't just an isolated problem. There are 3 million Muslims in America alone, and it's estimated that by 2025, the halal cosmetics industry will be a $20 billion market. Through our research, we've also found that Muslim women spend around $400 per year, and we've leveraged these types of insights to find our own successes. In the short year that we've been operating, we've generated over $10,000 in sales, and we've amassed thousands of fans from all around the world, all while collecting a list of emails from people who want to hear back from us regularly. Now, how do we do it? Well, throughout the Loyola Baltrepreneurs program, we've been fortunate to have support on every piece of our go-to-market strategy. For example, we're currently working with the Loyola Consulting Group to help bolster our online e-commerce traffic through advanced search engine optimization. And working with my mentor, Mick, we've developed a plan to increase our retail sales by partnering with local mosques. And throughout this program, we've even gotten support from international business experts to the point where we now have our products in places like Dubai, Germany, Kuwait, and more. We've done our homework, and we've collected hundreds of surveys and dozens of interviews, and we've developed a clear path forward to grow. From our research, we've discovered that most customers come back to buy makeup every three months, and we want to capitalize on these brand loyal customers to help us double our revenue every six months. So what makes us different from traditional makeup brands? Well, we want to be the halal makeup brand with Islamic values built into every aspect of our business, from how we operate to the products we provide and the messaging we give our clients. If Kylie Cosmetics were to come out with an Islamic halal makeup line tomorrow, it wouldn't make sense next to the hypersexualized content that's regularly pushed to their customers. And unlike halal cos and unlike other halal nail polish brands, we're focused on makeup to ensure that Muslims have access to all the cosmetics they need. We've amassed a team of rock stars that are passionate about giving back to their community, from experts in international relations to beauty professionals. I want to take a moment to talk about how hard my mom is, how hard my mom is working to succeed. For most of her life, she's juggled three jobs just to get by, and it's always been her faith and her family that kept her going. Halal Beauty Cosmetics is how she wants to give back to a community that has given her so much. We've been fortunate to garner the support from a variety of organizations, from winning a grant from the National Science Foundation to being featured in Women's Weekly International, to most recently completing programming amongst a cohort of rock stars in the Loyola Baltrepreneurs Accelerator. With all of the chaos going on, unfortunately, my mom had to close her beauty salon, and we've had to refocus our efforts on the e-commerce side of our business. 
With that being said, we would use the additional funding to boost our online presence through paid advertising and partnerships. Thank you for your support in helping get us thus far. To take us to the next level, we're also asking for any connections or introductions to groups or individuals who'd be interested in partnering or investing in Halal Beauty. We're excited to redefine beauty to be more representative with you. Thank you. Hello, my name is McKenna Moores and I am the owner and sole proprietor of McKenna's Cupcakes. I am the team behind the business and specialize in making mini cupcakes from scratch using only the finest ingredients. My mission is to brighten someone's day with a tiny touch of deliciousness. Now let me tell you a story. I started my cupcake business when I was in the 6th grade. I have had a Facebook page for a very long time now and a few months ago I received an order from a Loyola parent who found my page. She was desperate for a gift for her daughter's birthday and asked me if I could make cupcakes for her. I helped her choose just the right flavors and deliver the cupcakes right to her door. It was the ultimate birthday surprise. The mother was so thankful that even though she lived far away, she was able to do something special for her daughter. Not only did she find joy in this, but so did I. I knew from that moment on that this was the direction I needed to take my business in. The problem I find at Loyola is that parents are looking for unique ways to celebrate special occasions with their child, but there are little to no options to do this. While the school markets snack baskets at exam time, they do not market anything else to parents or offer any type of treat to be delivered on demand throughout the school year. Because the parents aren't living on campus and are unfamiliar with the surrounding Baltimore area, it is difficult to find something that will be meaningful to them and their child. McKenna's Cupcakes can fill this gap. My solution is to introduce McKenna's Cupcakes to the Loyola community. I believe there is a need for high quality homemade baked goods and that my mini cupcakes can fill that void. The mini cupcake is perfect because it offers so much variety and you get the chance to sample more than one flavor at a time. I also provide gluten free and vegan options. Specifically, I am targeting Loyola parents. I will be offering a quarterly cupcake package where parents can sign up to send cupcakes to their children four different times throughout the year on special occasions such as birthdays, Valentine's Day, exam time, etc. or on demand throughout the year. My go-to-market strategy is clearly laid out here for the foreseeable future. I am working on finalizing the quarterly package and will market this on the parents Facebook page as well as meet with the department that markets the treat packages at Loyola to see if they would offer my services as an option. I will continue to advertise to my target market audience on social media and provide on-demand options to the broader community. I sell my cupcakes by the dozen. I will continue to be the sole operator and employee, but will monitor the need to hire student bakers when the need arises. With the quarterly package, I will be able to gauge the demand throughout the year and accept standalone orders accordingly. To order cupcakes, customers can simply head on over to my Facebook and or Instagram account and click the link in my bio. My competition at Loyola is the care packages that parents send their students during exam time. While it is a convenient option, the packages do not contain high quality items and they can only be ordered at specific points in the year. Local bakeries in the Baltimore area may have good quality and variety, but they do not deliver and need more lead time to fill an order. My third competitor is supermarkets and mass producing bakeries. Within this category, the quality and the variety and customization for the customer is completely lost. I stand apart from each of my competitors with the fact that I make everything from scratch, I personally hand deliver each order I receive, and I make it extremely convenient for parents from anywhere around the world to send a little piece of home and happiness to their child. Since I have been accepted into the Accelerator program, my business has flourished. I have been interviewed by journalists and was featured on Loyola's main social media page. I created an Instagram account and established a social media presence within the Loyola community. I held a very successful promotional event outside of the school's dining hall and increased my brand recognition on campus. In between all of this, I have been fulfilling and delivering different orders around campus. The Accelerator has exposed me to so many people that have taught me the different steps needed to expand my business. I was provided with resources that helped me flourish, gain brand recognition, and succeed. My mentor and I have created a really strong bond that will last far beyond this program. She has been a great sounding board on how to improve my business, particularly through marketing. 
Because of my age and lack of experience in this business world, my mentor was invaluable. She helped me turn my product into a viable business and a brand new market. My vision right now is to build a customer base here at Loyola and eventually in the greater Baltimore area. I want to be able to connect people through my baking, through a standalone bakery, and make this a full-time role for myself after graduation. My ask from you today is to follow me on Instagram and Facebook at McKenna's Cupcakes. Please tell your friends about me, and last but not least, order yourself some cupcakes. Thank you so much. Hey, I'm Laquita Chansey, the founder and director of Small to More Homes, and I'm super excited to have just participated in the Loyola Baltipreneur Accelerator. Small to More Homes is an affordable housing nonprofit, and we build micro shelters and tiny homes for people who are experiencing homelessness. Pre-COVID-19, we would meet at the Baltimore Community Tool Bank every month to build our micro shelters with our volunteers. Now that we've had this COVID-19 situation, we've transitioned to creating hand washing toolkits for our volunteers to put together themselves. We also build tiny homes for people who don't want to spend $200,000 on a stick built home or want to live sustainably and minimally. And we also provide financial literacy workshops as services from our nonprofit. Our organization is definitely a social impact business that looks at resolving a housing crisis through an equity lens. We address blight by deconstructing vacants, rebuilding affordable homes with salvage materials, and those affordable homes would be the micro shelters and the tiny homes that we've seen um, similar models across the country. The Block Project is one of those organizations. They build single homes, um, accessory dwelling units and backyards in Seattle that are 125 square feet. Opportunity Village and Emerald Village build homes that are as small as 60 square feet, but they also offer kitchenettes, bathrooms, and wraparound services for their community members, which is definitely a business model that we would like to mimic here in Baltimore for people who are housing insecure or homeless. And finally, Tiny Homes on Wheels are a um, income strategy or that could be used for our organization um, for design, custom builds, as well as short and long-term rentals. We would use our micro shelters to replace the tent encampments that are throughout Baltimore. And because of COVID-19, these would be really helpful because they help our target population to remain socially distanced and quarantine as needed. The tiny homes on wheels, would be used for short-term rentals and an affordable housing model as they will have, you know, everything that a typical house would have with a kitchen and a bathroom. We've made significant progress by hosting over 500 volunteers. We've also have a list of at least 100 people interested in sleeping or experiencing our small to more tiny home. And we've made several partnerships throughout Baltimore. We build at the Community Tool Bank, Team Depot has sponsored 12 shelters. U-Haul has given us a grant for truck rentals. And we've spoken to Healthcare Access Maryland about providing wraparound services for our target population. We have a team of marketing experts, social media assistants, volunteer coordinators, and we've been super fortunate to have some interns reach out to us from both high school and colleges um, per semester to work with us. We've learned a lot through the Baltimorepreneur Accelerator. It was an amazing experience, experience being coached by Jim French, um, who is head of French development, getting feedback from Josh, Wendy, and Mauricio, as well as connections and introductions that they've made. 
The design thinking, branding classes, and pitching coaching has been amazing. And just the wealth of knowledge that they had to pour into us. I'm excited to mention that I'll be participating in the Conscious Venture Lab in fall of 2020 because of these connections. Thanks so much for this opportunity. Thanks so much for listening to my pitch. If you know anyone who's interested in volunteering, giving back to the community, or is passionate about housing, please send them our way. We are now handing out hand washing toolkits that any of our volunteers can put together. Visit us at smaltimorehomes.org. Hope to hear from you. Hi, my name is Ben James and I'm the founder of Stones Throw Hash. I'd like to start by posing a question. Did you know that only about 1% of food consumed in the US is locally sourced? This percentage shocked me when I heard it. You think about the importance of local food to local economies, to the diversity and sustainability of our food system as a country. It's very important. So why is it such a small percentage? First, I thought it was just because we uh, lack local farm infrastructure. But that's actually not the case. Uh, there's a body of evidence that shows that everyone in the U.S. could eat a nutritious diet sourced from within 200 miles of where they live. What it boils down to is convenience. Think about it. You have to go to your local farmer's market every week, buy based on seasonality. It's just very tough for busy people to do that. And that's where Stones Throw Hash comes in. Stones Throw Hash creates local and convenient uh, hash bowls for busy people who are trying to eat healthy on the go. First, let's talk about what the heck is a hash? Well, it comes from the French word hache to chop. Hashes are traditionally a combination of diced produce, root vegetables, eggs, and meats, typically from leftovers. We've taken hash to a whole new level with creative ingredient and incredible seasoning combinations like our proprietary Spanish-style chorizo, Maryland blue crab, and vegan Buddha hash. Great thing about all of our hashes is the, all the ingredients um, can be sourced locally year-round. Ingredients like root vegetables, eggs, and meats fitting perfectly with our localized supply chain model. Hashes are on trend as well. Breakfast foods continue to grow in popularity. And as you can see, our products have a number of consumer claims that are really um, on trend, like gluten-free, paleo, dairy-free, dairy high in protein, and high in fi fiber. So let's talk a little bit about what we've done and where we're going. Well. We have launched in May and sold over 7,000 hashes uh, through early, actually the first week in March. And we started with farmer's markets in May and expanded with the purchase of our food truck in September and expanded further into coffee shops like Milk and Honey Market in Station North and Three Bean Coffee in Federal Hill and even launched a grab and go option at Clipper City CrossFit. Our products are earning a very healthy gross margin as well at 59% year to date. So what's next? We're going to expand into grocery stores and e-commerce through the greater Baltimore and Washington DC area. We join Union Kitchen's Accelerator Program. And we'll be on their grocery shelves in the summer in Washington DC, as well as locally in Baltimore, places like Eddie's of Roland Park. We will also grow our coffee shop distribution with, uh, across the same area, bringing our projected revenue in 2021 to over $600,000. When you bring all these elements together, we have a truly differentiated business model. We take local ingredients, sell them through our food truck and farmer's markets, take those insights to guide what we sell in grocery stores, and finally, we give back 1% of revenue to local farming initiatives like the Farm Alliance of Baltimore. Stone's Throw Hash has an excellent management team and advisory team in place that will really take us to the next level. As a result of the Baltimore Accelerator Program, I was able to work with my mentor, Carlos Sanchez. Carlos was a huge help in developing our R&D and operations strategy to bring our hashes into grocery stores. I am excited to say he's going to stay on as a board member to continue to advise the company with his wealth of knowledge. In addition to his great mentorship, the Loyola Baltimore's program allowed me to hone in my pitch with working with Mustafa Wahid and Quinn Conyers, implement design thinking into our business processes and detail a uh, launch plan to manufacture our hashes.
As you can see, we've got a great plan in place to grow our business, but we need your help. We just launched a crowdfunding campaign to help fund the launch of our grocery and e-commerce business. So check it out at honeycombcredit.com and search for Stone's Throw Hash. Thanks so much for your time. One of the most important services that we all need to rely on is a hairstylist. Let's face it, when we look good, we feel good. I found myself in search of a new stylist once I moved to Baltimore City from Philadelphia a few years ago. The barbershop that I visited in Philly not only helped me to look good, but it provided me with a sense of community. So I was in search of that same feeling here in Baltimore. After six years of living here, I've been to five different barbershops in five different parts of town due to various staffing issues. Today, I am still unable to find that consistent barber that I once had in my hometown. Hi, I'm Eric Warner, founder of Style Trail, and the question that I have for you is, do you know how much money is lost each year on an empty workstation with no working beauty professional? On average, it can be a loss of 10,000 per year. Staffing is consistently one of the biggest problems in the spa and wellness industry and is becoming an even bigger one. Salons, spas, and barbershops can't find the qualified stylists and managers they need to keep up. And turnover is huge. In August 2018, ISPA reported that there were 470,000 vacant positions for service providers in the U.S. spa industry alone. So what is the solution to the staffing issue within the beauty community? Style Trail, an online platform that helps beauty talent to search, book, and work at open beauty spaces listed by beauty owners. We are a two-sided marketplace that earns a 10% commission from beauty owners upon every confirmed booking. We also add a transaction fee of 3% to the total booking amount once the beauty talent confirms their booking. For example, if a workstation was rented for one day at $40, Style Trail would earn a commission of $5.20 from that transaction. The global beauty industry is expected to grow from $433 billion to $750 billion by 2024. There are approximately 2.7 million beauty establishments worldwide with at least two unoccupied workstations. Our goal is to obtain 1.1 million total bookings by year five. Our research shows that people in the beauty industry value face-to-face -face communication, so we plan to attend beauty expos to demonstrate our product. We also plan to form strategic partnerships with beauty schools, and we have a database of over 33 licensed beauty professionals from the state boards of cosmetology who we plan to reach out to through email marketing. We are projected to earn $175,000 in year one and surpass $1.4 million in revenue by year five. We expect to spend approximately $7,000 in our first year on general operating expenses. This amount will drop to under $2,000 in the following years. Our number one competitor is Shearshare, a mobile app with 700 salons and 1,600 daily active users. Secondly is Hourly Stylist with just under 1,000 downloads. And lastly is My Open Chair, who is only focused on hair stylists. By offering online booking and business development tools, we are setting ourselves apart from the competition. My 10 years of industry experience has helped me to create the user experience design of the Style Trail platform. I am a design educator, interaction designer, and I've designed for companies such as the Philadelphia Eagles, University of Miami, and T. Rowe Price. Destiny Gordon is a communication professional that has worked with large brands, including Food Network. She is helping to shape the story of the Style Trail brand through social media. We have been featured in Black Enterprise, Afrotech, Technically, Thrive Global, and completed three accelerator programs, including this one. We also have 33,000 email subscribers. Your investment of 250,000 will help us to maintain our web presence, purchase the State Board of Cosmetology listings, execute our marketing strategy, and attend trade shows in order to reach $1.4 million in revenue by year five. Being a part of the Baltimore Newers program has given us access to human capital that will help us take our business to the next level. 
We believe the mentorship that we have received is even more valuable than the investment because we are part of a community that will last forever. We now feel confident that our business will help push the beauty community in Baltimore City and beyond even further. Hi, my name is Eric Warner and this is Style Trail. Thank you. Hi, I'm Maria, co-founder and CEO of Tomana. Tomana makes life easier for pet owners by matching them with trusted neighbors who are willing to swap pet sitting. I'm also a dog mom. Like every other pet owner, when I'm making my travel plans, one of my first concerns is, who's going to watch my pet when I'm gone? I could leave my dog at a kennel or a boarding facility, but she might catch something from another dog, and she won't get personal attention. It's also really expensive and can run between four to $500 just for a week. I could use an app like Rover to find a dog sitter, but I have no idea what kind of care she's going to get, and it's still pretty pricey. My last option is to ask a friend, but I can't ask the same person all the time without feeling guilty. And sometimes they aren't available, or they move, and they can't help when I need them, taking me back to square one. That's why we created Tomana. It's super simple. You watch my pet, I'll watch yours. Or someone else in the Tomana community will watch yours. The concept is very old, bartering, but the execution is new. Here's how it works. To get started, the member just answers a few guiding questions that tells us about them and their pet. Next, they let us know when they need help and we match them with a compatible neighbor who's available. If it's a fit, the pet owner takes their trip, leaving their pet with their neighbor. At a later date, the pet owner will return the favor and watch someone else's pet. Our business model is based on a subscription to a community membership paid upfront for the year. We have one pricing solution for our B2C customers, the pet owners. We have another set of pricing for our B2B2C customers, the property managers of apartment buildings who are focused on building community and retaining their residents. For an annual fee of just $100, a pet owner can receive unlimited pet sitting as long as they're willing to return the favor, making back the cost of their membership after just four days. We have a working MVP that's tech enabled and are doing a live beta test with our members. We're not trying to grow outside of Maryland, but we are already experiencing organic growth. We have potential users in DC, New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania, including a property manager in Pennsylvania who heard about us from another property manager. The pet market is huge. 68% of households in America, that's 84 million homes, have pets. We estimate that 60.1 million of these households fall into our market, creating a $6 billion total addressable market at a $100 annual membership fee. Our main competitors are Rover, WAG, and dog boarding facilities, but none of them can compare with Tomana. We offer loving care, a convenient location, socialization with a neighbor's pet, all at an affordable price. Here's our team. I am a CPA, and prior to co-founding Tomana, I was a manager at PwC. My co-founder, Teddy, has a background in communications and experience in commercial real estate. The rest of our team have backgrounds in business development, fundraising, startups, software development, branding, and marketing. Our adoption strategy is a combination of partnerships with apartment buildings, hosting yappy hours at local dog-friendly breweries, social media marketing, and organic growth in local coffee shops and pet stores. Just with our beta test alone, we have saved our members over $5,400, and we've provided 168 days of pet care. Here you can see a quote from one of our members. One of the main reasons Tomana was built is because we recognize that money is tight, and our focus is to build a safety net and community for members and provide an affordable option for people who love their pets and are willing to help someone else. We believe that now more than ever, people will be conscious of their spending. The time is right for Tomana to take off. During our time in the Accelerator program, we definitely accelerated. Prior to the program, we had partnerships with just two apartment buildings and take a look at how we've grown. In the fourth quarter of 2019, we experienced a 4X growth over the prior year. The Baltipreneur program provided us with amazing mentors, helped us to prepare our pitch, grew our network, and gave us access to a student consulting team that's helping us with design, development, and marketing as we speak. 
Here is our website, our social media, and my personal email address. Please contact us if you are a pet owner interested in becoming a beta user, if you are a property manager interested in working with us, or if you have cute pet photos, dogs or cats that you can send us. We look forward to hearing from you. Bye.